to be praised. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus. some praise tonight. Oh, that sounds kind of weak. I know it's Friday. I know it's nice outside. But how many of y'all came to give God some praise tonight? How many of y'all happy you made it through another week? Really? Y'all not happy y'all made it through another week? Y'all sound like God let y'all off on Tuesday. We made it to Friday. We made it to the weekend. I know I'm especially happy because Sunday's my birthday. And I thank God for making another lap around life. So I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. How many of y'all happy to be here? If you're happy to be here, just give God a shout hallelujah just one time. Oh, I just want to praise you for heaven and heaven and heaven. For all you done for me, blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. 
Just wanna praise you. I just wanna praise you for heaven and heaven and heaven for all you done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to love you. I just want to love you for For me, blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. For heaven and heaven and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings, glory, blessings and glory. They all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know that God is the center of our joy? I mean, do y'all really believe that? I say, how many y'all? How many y'all know that God is the center of our joy? He's not on the outside. He's where? He's right in the middle of everything. Whether it's going your way or not going your way, just know that God is in the middle of all of it. He's right there next to you. How many of y'all believe that? When I lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You are the fire and light. When nights are long and cold, In sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all my fears when I'm all alone. Your hand is there to hold. You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hold for all I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy.
your wife, I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You are the music in the meadows and the streams. The voices of the children my family and my home you are the source and finish of my heart's dream oh, 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 Jesus you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. For all I do, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. You're my everything, everything, everything. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Strong winds 
everybody praise the lord come on this is the day that the lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad and let me try that again this is the day that the lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad in it they tell me that the third time is the charm this is the day that the lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad in it i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord amen amen Amen. Welcome, welcome to our third installment of our church anniversary, 114th church anniversary revival. Amen. Amen. We've already had the moderator of Middlesex come and share with us, uh, don't forget your stones. Amen. Then we had the moderator of the New Hope Association come and talk to us about keep your head up. And tonight, we are pleased and privileged to have the moderator of the Shiloh Baptist Association who's going to come and preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And I'm looking forward to what God has in store for us this evening. God, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to come out to your house of worship one more time. You didn't have to let us live, but God, we're so glad that you did. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, you have brought us safe thus far. And for that, Lord, we are forever grateful. Thank you for this opportunity to come to revival one more time. God, we pray that you will revive us again and let the revival begin in us. So, God, we thank you for what you've already done, and we thank you for what you're about to do. And we plan to give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor, which is due you. Thank you in advance for what's getting ready to happen in this place. This is our prayer. We pray it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every heart say amen. 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 Our scripture this evening comes from the book of Romans, the epistle to the church uh, in Rome, Romans chapter 10. Amen. Beginning at verse 12. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of God. My brothers and sisters, we've come for revival tonight, and as I shared uh, before, we have a preacher in the house. Amen? Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here tonight to hear a word from the Lord. I wonder how many folks in here need to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Don't, don't fool me now. How many folks in here really need to hear a word from the Lord? I don't know what you've been going through, but through many dangers, toils, and snares, he has brought us safe thus far, and I need to hear from God tonight. Well, brothers and sisters, we've got a preacher in the house tonight. Amen. 
he hails from the city of Patterson. Amen. And he pastors in the city of Newark. He's been there for 16 years, right? 16 years pastoring the Beulah Grove Baptist Church in Newark. And we are grateful for him to be with us tonight. He is the moderator of the Shiloh Baptist Association of New Jersey. Amen. And I, I had the privilege of working with him for nine, nine good years. Amen. Uh, with Shiloh Association. Amen. And we're grateful for this opportunity to have him come and preach. Caesar Clark said that the best way to introduce a preacher is to simply let them preach. And so the next word that we will hear tonight after the choir has sung however many songs their moderator tells them to sing, the next word that we will hear is that of God through this preacher the Reverend Cedric McCoy. Put your hands together and give God some praise in this place as the choir comes and the preacher preaches.
from heaven he came down oh what joy i found oh no you were not there and you don't know when or where what the lord has done for me he gave me the victory i'm a believer if you're a believer say yeah, yeah. I love you, Lord. 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 I love. Thank you and we praise your name for this another opportunity to be in the house of God. We love you. We are all believers in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your kindness that you continue to extend towards us. You've been good to us, God. And for that, we say thank you. God, we thank you for another opportunity to come into the house of prayer, that we might be revived, we might be rejuvenated, that we might uh, come before you, God, and we might be refined and made refreshed in you. We pray, God, that if there's anything that is not like you, that it, you will remove it from this place, that we might freely come knowing that we have entered your gates with thanksgiving and into your course with praise. Forgive us of our sins, creating us a clean heart, and renew the right spirit within us. And if there's someone that does not have a relationship with you, we pray that something will be said or done tonight, oh God, that will have them to come to your altar and to give their lives to you before it is ever too late. We praise your name and we honor you for who you are. For it is in Jesus' name, I pray that you will touch my stuttering tongue that I might speak with clarity. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And all the saints of God say together, amen. I am grateful for this opportunity and this privilege to be able to stand behind the desk where Pastor Sean Wallace, my good friend from over the years, across the years, stands uh, week after week preaching the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. It is good to be at the St. John Baptist Church here in the city of Scotch Plains. I told Pastor Wallace when I walked in the office, I said, man, I might have to change my residence. <laughs> Felt good riding through Scotch Plains tonight. Man. Some beautiful homes, beautiful neighborhood. Um, and I'm just grateful for the privilege and the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Shiloh, for coming and, and blessing us tonight, the Shiloh Choir. Um, this is uh, the first time, I believe, or second time going out 
uh, with. Since COVID, we have not really been doing much, but I'm grateful that they thought in our robbery to come and to share tonight uh, by way of song, and we're grateful uh, for you. I think we might have to start a chill youth choir up. You done started something up, we're gonna talk when we get back to Newark. Uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to my good friend, Reverend Miller, for coming and sharing with us tonight as well. I don't plan to hold you for long. Psalms 46 speaks to us tonight. Psalm 46, we're going to look at its entirety. Psalms 46. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 11. Psalm 46, verse 1 through 11. I'm grateful for the, all the other moderators who are here, and I'm sure that they're doing a wonderful job. I guess Pastor uh, Wallace said I'll save the alphas for last. <laughs> As Pastor Gamble will be here next week, I guess he'll save the alphas for last. I'm glad I'm before him. Psalms 46, verses 1 through 11 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof? There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease until the end of the earth, and he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I want us to focus on verse 10 where it simply says, be still and know that I am God. Tonight I just want to simply talk about be still and know. Be still and know. With all that is plaguing at us and keeping us busy, Rarely do we ever find a place of quiet and solace. For if we are honest, once we have found what we think is a place where we can hide away, that place we can go and nobody finds us, either they find us or something of life will rare, the devil will rear his head and it will find us and cause us to have more other busy episodes in our lives. If we think about life today, I have two small children, and as I think about my children as they're growing up, I can remember a time where I thought that I could hide in the bathroom. But if you have children, you know they don't care what the bathroom smells like. They'll come and they'll sit right next to you and they'll have a conversation, and you thought that was going to be some me time, but you'll find that they'll, they don't mind what it smells like. It's our time. That that's how life is. As soon as we think we have things in order, as soon as we think we can have a place of quiet and solace, as soon as we feel like the merry-go-round of life has slowed down, here goes something or another to, to put the, to allow the merry-go-round to go fast again, and we simply ask the Lord for a breather. Here in today's text, the psalmist in Psalms 46 and 1 tells us that God is our refuge, which when we look at this thing, all of us can put what he is to us in the blank spot that comes after God is. I tell my church all the time, put up your rearview mirror and look back over your life every now and then, and you'll discover that God has been closed on your back. God has been food on your table. When you thought you were not going to make it and you thought you were going to lose your mind, Revelation reminded you that if you keep your mind on him, He'll keep you in perfect peace. But we'll come to discover that God can be to us what Revelations also tells us, that at times life causes us to cry. But the Bible reminds me that God will dry the tears from our eyes. So all of us have our own scenario of who God is, but the psalmist here tells us that he is our refuge. 
He is a quiet place, a, a shelter. He is a safe haven from the noise and the chaos that life brings. God, God is not just our refuge. He's not just our tuck away, our hideaway. But every now and then as we walk life's journey, we become weary along the journey. Not only do we become weary, but we become a weak along the journey. And the psalmist tells us that when we are weak, he reminds me that our strength does not come from the hills, but our strength comes from the maker of the hills. God is my refuge. He's my hideaway, but he's also my strength, and which means he's my power, the one in whom the word press on has been derived from. Has anybody ever been on the journey and you didn't know how you were going to make it to the next step? You didn't know you didn't have the strength or the resources or the mindset to make it from one step to another. You saw the light at the end of the tunnel, but you didn't have what it took to get to the light. And when you look up and you look and you look around, you come to discover that you have a testimony. I don't know how I got here, but as I look back over my life, it had to be the power and the presence of God that not just allowed me to get to where I was going, but I'm reminded of the, the, the poem Footprints. I realized that every now and then I was not carrying myself, but God was carrying me. Anybody here can look over your life and, and, and say, Lord, have mercy. You didn't know what else to pray, but all you said was, Lord, have mercy. And you discovered that he may not come when you want him. But when I'm weak, he shows up right on time. Therefore, if we realize he's our hideaway, if we realize that we can play hide and go seek with the devil and realize that we can have strength from God, we understand that we shall not fear. I'm going to stay here for a second because fear is indicative of a lack of faith and trust. When we fear what we're going through, when we fear what's going on in our lives, when we fear whatever is transpiring in our lives, it's really telling God, I don't trust you. When we are fearful, we, 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 we remind ourselves because when, when, when we fear, the adversary knows in our most frail place we're vulnerable. And this is the time that he can do, guess what? He can play with your mind. He can ultimately cause you to have a lack of faith and trust in God because the devil knows if I get your mind. It, 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 you, ever, you ever been in the room? I remember when I first went to my church and I was sitting in the office one night. I'm the new pastor. I'm sitting around. I'm trying to check things out. And the ice maker started making noise in the kitchen. And I say, ain't nobody, but I thought it was only me in here. You know, we're in Newark. I put the gates down when I go in my church that night, and I'm in there by myself. So I said, did I lock somebody up in here with me? And it was simply the ice maker. And my, my, my time there, my little office hours were cut short that night. Yeah. I, I, I hope no members needed me that night because I was fearful being in that place. And it was nothing but the ice maker making noise that caused me to get up and go home. And let me tell you something. The devil knows if he can cause you to be afraid, if he can cause you to be scared, if he can get in your mind, he realizes that if I get your mind, I can get your heart. If I can get your heart, I can make you walk into places that you are fearful in. But ponder on this for a moment. How can we feel fear? I already told y'all that he is our hideaway. He's our refuge. He has tucked us away in a safe haven. Let me remind us today that fear is not an attribute from God. Yeah, yeah, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 reminds us that God has not given us the spirit of fear. So fear is learned. Fear is something that somebody else can tell you and it can mess you up. Fear is, is learned, but, but he has given us a, a, a power, a sense of power, love, and sound mind. Fear, which is a tactic given to us by Satan himself, can very, can very well be dangerous. It can take over your thoughts and be you before you know it. It can slip you into a place of anxiety. It can slip you into a place of isolation. It can slip you into a place of depression. 
And God is telling you all along the way, you know, we, 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 really, find, we really figure out how, 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 how saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost we are when something transpires in our lives. Yeah, Pharaoh's army is behind me, and, and the Red Sea is before me. How, how much of a Christian are you just finished giving God praise and glory in church? You just finished telling how people how good God is, but let something happen, and you'll discover how much you really love the Lord. How much you really trust the Lord. And allow me the privilege to call some words that I'm sure when you hear them, it will cause you to go into another place. Uh, allow me the privilege. To, come on, let me be honest tonight. Anybody ever heard the word cancer before? Uh-huh. Anybody ever heard the word HIV before? Monkey pox, uh, flu. If you're a certain age and you hear the doctor tell you, you got shingles. Anybody of your certain age, you walk around and you got that, you got your boyfriend, which I told my member, she got a boyfriend, she carried with her, y'all know what that is, it's all a walking game. And if you're a certain age, you're trying not to fall because you know if you break that hip, it might. There's a fear there. Right, right, right. My grandmother, when it would snow, she would not go out of the house because she said, guess what, I'm too old to fall now, baby, so I'm just going to hang around in the house. See, 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 I mean, come on, let's be real honest. Let's be real honest with ourselves for a moment. I don't even need to call words when it comes to being fearful. Let somebody start coughing around you. They knew they had a cold. Why they come to church tonight? And they got the nerve to be sitting around here with no mask on. We're fearful. Everything is COVID now, but guess what? Allergies are still on the rise. Colds, and we don't, the Bible said, well, look, we don't know what season is going to be. It's the end times. We're getting close. We don't know if it's summer. They say New Jersey is the only place you get all five seasons in one week. <laughs> Hot today, cold tomorrow, warm. We never know what the season is going to be. We become fearful. Soon as somebody starts acting a little different around us, we, we start acting fearful. The, but the fear we feel today has less to do with the physical enemy surrounding us. But much of our fear comes from the lack in which we face. I'm referring to the unknown. You know, we nosy folk. God said, I'm going to take you from point A to point B. We want to know all the instructions beforehand. God said, just be still and let me handle this thing. When we lack economically, how do we fear? How am I going to make ends meet? But you were just in church telling, telling everybody, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein, let the bill collect the call. And you forgot that David said, I once was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. We become fearful. When we lack in areas of our health, we wonder, am I ever going to get well? But did you forget that the Bible said that, 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 that God has to heal? God can heal anything? When we face challenges in our families, in our homes, in our communities, it is a part of our inner being to become fearful. Have you ever noticed how some people deal with their fears? Instead of dealing with it head on, folk either shut down or find a way to stay busy. You, want, you know any you know, all the only busy folk? You know, you, know, you, you know anybody who's always on the move? Some, some think as long as I stay moving, my issue ain't going to catch up with me. As long as I stay moving, it looks like I'm making some productivity, but let me give somebody some news tonight. As long as if, if you're, a, a rocking chair moves. But a rocking chair is not making any progress. So just because you're moving does not mean that thing you're running from cannot catch up to you. The Bible ought to read, the Bible ought to remind us when we, the promises of God reminds us that thing that we're running from is what we ought to run to. That thing that we're trying to keep away from us, God is saying, come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. There is a whole lot of folk who have had to run your whole lives. And I want to tell somebody tonight that God is saying, stop running and be still. I tell you, you're running from either this or that. Always, there's always something that's going to plague us because the Bible also reminds us that the devil is going to and fro. Trying to see in whom he can devour. And some of our prayers to God is simply, Lord, can I please have a break? 
Lord, can you please slow it down? Can I just have a moment to, to refocus? Lord, can I just have a moment to reboot? But allow me to encourage you that you are not alone when God is your refuge. He will never put any more on you than you can bear. And I, I, I want to let that ask you a serious question. When is the last time that you actually stopped and spent some time with you? Some folk are afraid to be with themselves. Some folk are afraid to what that, some, some folk are afraid. My wife was in the shower last night, and she got out the shower, and she said, whoo, child, she would tell the kids. She said, I had a long conversation in there. <laughs> and she said, guess what? Some voices was talking back, and I said, Lord, have mercy, sir. She said, I had a long conversation. I already figured out my day of work tomorrow, and the voices was talking back. Come on, don't act like y'all ain't the only one that talk when you get in the shower. Y'all wish I had a notepad so you could write some of that stuff down when you got out. But look, but, but look, sometimes we got to learn how to meet ourselves, and we are too busy running from this and that that we never learn who we really are. I, I, let me prove my point. James 1.24 says, many of, many of us look but walk away as we forget what we saw. We look in the mirror. Yeah. Then we don't want to deal with what we, what we look at, and what do we do? We walk away, and we act like we forgot what we saw when we was looking. You know, there's a difference between the man and the woman. The man, he, he'll, glaze, he'll gaze at, he'll, uh, he'll just, he just glance at the mirror. But women, they gaze at it. Come on, y'all y'all know there's some spots there that hasn't been there. Ooh, I got this mole here. I got this little wrinkle here. I got this there. Y'all spot everything. And God is saying, I don't want you to just, gay, just glance at the mirror, but I want you to look. And when you look, understand and know my promises will bring you through anything. You may have been hurt in your past, but guess what? If you take some time to spend with yourself, I will walk with you. I will talk with you. I won't just walk with you and talk with you, but I will heal your pain. I will heal your hurt. I will heal whatever it is that you've been through. Too many learn how to just uh, uh, to adjust to your lifestyle, but God is saying, "Okay, I've got more for you. I, I, I got I, I, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of God what I have in store to, for you." But guess what? You just want a gay glance at the mirror, and God is saying, "Come on, let's not just put some stuff under the rug, but let's deal with what's looking back at you." And you know what the good news is? You don't have to deal with it by yourself. He already told us, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will, I, I, we, we put it like this, I'll never put any more on you than you can bear. God is saying at times in life, you got to be still and deal with what's going on. Anybody ever had to put, to put a picture up? And when you put that picture up, you put a hole in the wall. You ain't call a man to come fix the hole. What you do, you put a hole next to it and you put the picture over so that you would not see the whole. That's what a whole lot of us do with our lives. God is saying, I don't want you to put something over, a patch over your situation. I want you to take, the, take it off and let me not just heal you, but I want to make you whole again. Jesus said, I did not come that you might have pain, but I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You are made in his image. You are made in his likeness. I did not come that you might suffer. You know why I didn't come that you might suffer? Because he reminds us, greater is what? He that is within me than he that is within the world. A whole lot of folk blame others for who they are. And the issue is not others. But a whole lot of time, the issue is me. Think about it. When you were born, you had no control of who your parents would be. You had no control of what side of the tracks you was going to grow up on or how rich or how poor you were going to be. And some folk, guess what you're doing? You're still holding on to it. Something you had no control over. You had no control of what your name was going to be. I work in the school system, and all, all, at, at least once or twice a month, a child would come down and they say, I went to my guidance counselor and I changed my name because I ain't like what my mom and daddy named me. We had no control over that. 
Where will we live? You had no control over that when you were a child, the kind of home you will grow up in. But we do have control over who we are today and who we will become. If only we could see the truth, we have nothing to fear. If we place our faith and begin to rely with in totality to our God. He is our collective strength. He allocates his power to all of his children. Guess what? Equally, you don't have to worry about, well, Lord, the Lord done, uh, 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 ran out of power working on Sister Susie, so I don't want to bother God to work. No, no. God has time for you. He has time for me. When I was growing up, I sang a song, and that song said he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, you and me, sister, and he cares about us equally. To calm our the fear, the Lord gives us Psalms 46 and 10, and I'm almost done. A simple command he gives us. He says, be still. And in your stillness, you got to know. There's some things in your life that you're just going to have to go through. And those things in life that you go through, guess what? They have molded you. They have shaped you. They have made you. They have built you up to be able to handle any battle, any fight, any sickness, any frailty. It has made you the person that you are today. My mother grew up in the South, and I hated to hear her tell her Southern stories. I would take, I would walk to school with it on that clay, on that clay. I wouldn't put my shoes on, but I would hold my shoes in my hand. And when I, when I got to school, I washed my legs down because my legs was red because of the clay. I only had one pair of shoes, so when I had holes in them, I would put cardboard in them so that I would not mess them up. And then I would walk back home after school. There were some days I had to work in the field. There were some days that I could not go to school. I had to teach myself how to read, how to do arithmetic. But now as I look over my life, August 9th of, of 2023, my mama will be 80 years old. She got thousands of dollars in the bank. She can look in the, in the closet and pick out anything to wear. She retired at 58 years old. And let me tell y'all something. Y'all was fearing something that you went through in your past. But every now and then, you got to put your rear view mirror up. And you know what your rear view mirror says? Objects are closer than they appear. That thing should have took you out. That thing should have killed you. You should have lost your mind. But God kept you by his power divine and now you say I have no test I have no testimony but what you can do is you can look over your life and say look where he's brought me from have not always had a nice car have not always had a nice house have not always could wear what I wanted to wear but I thank God for his grace and his mercy Psalms 4 and 4 tells us, you know what it tells us? Stand in all. Sit not, commune with me. Commune your heart with me upon your bed. And while you're communing, don't move around. Don't get antsy. Don't get prancy, but be still. Commune with your heart simply means while you're still, listen to God's voice. This world is loud. There's so many things plaguing us, trying to get our attention. Facebook and, and, all, and, and Amazon and all these places around. They're trying to get our attention. But every now and then, God says, I need you to be still. He got your all attention three years ago, didn't you? COVID-19 hit. You, and you do thought that you had it together. You thought you had a good health plan. But guess what? There's some folk that are not with us today because they could not handle it on their own. But God kept you by his power divine. And you ought to be glad today. But for the grace of God it could have been I being still works y'all Jesus used it during the treacherous storm in Mark chapter 4 verse 39 when he got out he didn't say shut up he got out and he says peace be still and what happened when he said peace be still the, the storm it just it laid down and halted and guess what y'all it works today. The Lord gives us that same command. And, and as it worked on the storm, guess what? It will work on anything in your life. Let, let, let's, be, let's, be, let's be honest. Think of some storms of life has afforded you. Which instead of joy, it gave you worry and it gave you stress. But through it all, God 
was saying, stop running. God was saying, stop trying to figure it out. On your own, simply be still. And in your stillness, you just have to know. Any of y'all remember dating and you ever asked your boyfriend or your girlfriend, do you love me? And if they responded, you just got to know that you know. And y'all still together, y'all made it. <laughs> just some stuff you got to go through in order to understand the stillness and what God means by it. You must make this thing personal. Every now and then you got to say, it's me. It's me, oh Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. I know I'm raising my hands in worship. I know I'm smiling around my friends and my loved ones. Nobody knew what it took for you to get here tonight. Nobody knows what your bills look like at home. Nobody in this place knows what your health care criteria is. Nobody knew what it took you to get to the house of God tonight. And God is saying, this thing you got to make personal. He says, God is my refuge, my hiding place. And in order for me to get through all these things I need to get through, every now and then I just got to stop. And remind myself, make myself confident in knowing he's a friend to the friendless. Friend, whenever else you have left to fend for ourselves, know that God is and will be the peace in your storm. He's saying, I have not brought you this far to leave you alone. Just be still. He's, he's, he's saying to us in this text, I've got you in the palm of my hand, but you must not fear, but you must trust me by faith. Let me remind y'all today, y'all know what the facts say, but remind yourself, I don't walk by facts. I walk by faith. I know what the doctor said, but I know what my faith tells me. I don't look like what I've been through 12 years ago. I laid on a table. I had an aortic aneurysm. I should have left this place at 30 years old, but God touched me and allowed me to be here one more time. When I woke up, they told me I died in recovery, but they brought me back. Let me tell you something. I know what the facts say, but my faith tells me that God can do anything but fail. Don't you ever think that there's anything too hard for God. Listen, y'all, there is nothing too hard for God. Don't you tell the world how big your problem is, but you remind them by faith how big your God is. In your stillness, focus not on the busyness that life brings, but take some time to reflect on God and focus on him who can and who will ultimately give you the ability to, guess what, hurdle over your circumstances. He will give you the strength to hurdle over your obstacles. He will give you the strength to hurdle whatever it is. And let me tell you all something. While you're being still, you ought to learn how to stay in your own lane. Yeah. I wish somebody would hear me today. We want to be in everybody else's business and we got mess going on in our own houses. No, stay in your lane. You know my daughter, she just started running track and I learned from track that as you're running, if when you're running, you want to get ahead of the next person, you can't go around them or you'll be disqualified. You know why? Because that's not your lane to be in. You got to stay in your lane every now and then. God is telling you it's none of your business what's going on across the street. You got to focus and be still on what's going on in your own house. Because you, if you get your own house together, guess what? Then you can help somebody else in their house. Take time to get away from the noise and the negativity that shouts out in our daily lives. Even if it's for only five minutes during your lunch break, be still. Five minutes after work, you know what you got to run into in the house. You got to do laundry. You got to make sure dinner's cooked. You got to do this. You got to do that. No, sit in that car for five minutes and just be still. After you park the car, just sit there for a moment before you close your eyes at night, before you go to bed. Before, and look, some of, some of us, the last thing we do is we saw some TikToks. We saw some Facebook. We saw some Instagram. We, we saw this and we saw that. And guess what you're sleeping on? You're sleeping on all that. No, talk to your daddy before you go to sleep. And ask him to watch over you and cover you by his power to find. Listen and commune with your own heart. Hear the voice of the Lord. And as he says, know that 
I am God. Well, all the service, I've been asking for you to be still. I've been simply asking you to be still. Now I want to ask you another question. Why won't you? Do you really believe that things in your life can change? Hold on, let's take this preaching privilege to remind you that, yes, it can. Let me take this preaching privilege to remind you that, yes, it will. For God is a change agent. After all, we serve a God who specializes in doing the amazing and the unbelievable. We sing a song in our church, have you any rivers? That you cannot, have you any mountains that you can't? God specializes. And and he will do with no other power. James 1 and 17 tells us that guess what? I know he specializes because every good and every perfect gift, it comes from above. Well, my time is up. Thank you, Pastor Wallace, for having me. But I believe in our stillness there is somebody here who might just be on the verge of God's favor and manifestation in their life. In your stillness, I believe if you just be still, God will open up the windows of heaven. And he will pour you out blessing that you will not have. He will blow your mind if you stop running and just be still. If he has spoken to your heart, please don't shut him down. Don't shut him out. Don't turn him away. God is here. He's saying, don't go home the same way you came. He's saying, I'm here and I'm available. He's saying, be still. Stop running. Stop hiding. Stop acting like there's nothing wrong in your life that I can do for you. Stop acting like you are so busy, but simply be still and trust me. And in your still moments, he needs you to keep on praying. In your still moments, he needs you to keep on serving. In your still moments, he needs you to keep on believing. Because whatever the situation, he's telling you, don't give up on God. Because God won't give up on you. Don't give up because just when you think it's over, just when you're ready to throw in the towel, just when you think time is is up to fly the flag of surrender, That just might be the time in your stillness situation when your situation will turn from a victor to being victorious in him. In your stillness, you might, you might, you might, you might, you might, you might not understand God's direction. Become fearful of the unknown. Sometimes while you're in your still moments, God is saying, take courage because the Lord will make a way somehow. He's saying, trust me in your stillness. Trust me in your burdens. Trust me in your heartache. He's saying, just be still and in your stillness. Know that I am God. Know that I can make a way. Know that I will open a door. Know that I will bless your family. Know I will bring your wavered child back home. Know I will make a way in your finances. God is saying, be still and know that I am God. Well, somebody may not know him. I want to tell somebody who he is. This God is Adam's redeemer. This God is Noah's ark. This God is Abraham's sacrifice. This God is is Gideon's fleece. This God is Samson's power. Is there anybody here on a Friday night that know God is your refuge and your strength? God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Is there anybody here on a Friday night? You're going to trust this God. You're going to walk with this God. You're going to believe in this God. I stop by to tell somebody to be not dismayed. Whatever, 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 whatever be tied, God will. I said God will. I said, God will. Is there anybody here on a Friday night that knows that God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide? God will take care of you. I want to ask somebody a question. Has he ever picked you up? Has he ever turned you around? Has he ever gave you joy? And now you can sing a song that the angels can't sing. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Ain't God all right? I said, ain't he all right? Ain't he, ain't he, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he bless you? Won't he keep you? You 
ought to give God some glory. You ought to give God some praise. Because when I look back over my life and think things over in my stillness, I can truly say I've been blessed. You've been blessed. Yes. I said yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. I know one thing in my stillness. I may not know when he comes, but when he comes, it's always on time. The Lord will make a way. Somehow. Anybody know God will keep you in your stillness? Anybody know God will make a way? In your stillness, won't he pick you up? In your stillness, won't he turn you around? In your stillness, won't he give you joy? In your stillness, won't he give you peace? We serve a God that reminds us in his word. I just got to be still. And in my stillness, I just got to know. Some things folk can't tell me, but some things I got to know for myself. There, there, there's some, there, if you look over your life, you'll see that there are some bridges these brought you, took you over. You couldn't just stand at the edge of the bridge, but guess what? I had to put one foot in front of the other. We got to stop saying, God, move my mountains. No, say, Lord, give me the strength to climb. Because every time he gives you the strength to climb, it shows how powerful he really is. And guess what? Somebody knows he is always looking to try to see how you're going to get out this one this time. But guess what? It said it's only because of the grace and the mercy of God. Let me tell you, in your stillness, God will give you peace. Let me remind you, God will give you peace. And, and you see, sometimes we are confused with what peace is. There was a man that was trying to show this little boy what peace was. And he told two brothers, he said, I want y'all to draw me a picture. One brother, he took his time, he drew this picture, he drew some nice water, a pond, and he drew some ducks, and he drew uh, the sun shining, and he drew a man just sitting by the side and watching how, the, the, how, the, how life was going. Everything was so quiet and serene to him, but he said, that, that looks nice. He said, now the other little brother, you start, you, start, you start drawing now. The other little brother started drawing, and as he was drawing, he, he drew a black clouds. He drew the, the, the lightning. He drew wind blowing stuff around. He drew all of the darkness. He drew all of this. And the man that was watching, he was amazed. But you guess what he drew? He drew a little bird sitting by the edge and all that was going on around him. And somehow or another, as everything was going on, there was a light shining down on the little bird so they can see him. And the man looked at the two little boys and said, guess what? That's peace. With everything that's going on around, with everything you're going through, what you're trying to figure things out, guess what? Yeah, I know the Bible says that, you know, he'll take you by some still water. Some of y'all from, from the 60s know the cooling water, y'all. You, you know he'll take you by some still waters, but every now and then, God wants to test your peace in the midst of a storm. He wants to test your peace like he did Job. He wants to test how much peace do you really have? Do you really believe on me? Do you really trust me? Peace is when hell is going, when the world is going crazy around you and hell is going, all, it, it, you just don't know what tomorrow is going to be and you can just sit there. And while you're sitting there, you can say, I ain't worried about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't worry about my future because but the sky may turn to gray. You can sit there like that little bird in that dark moment and say many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand, but guess what? In my stillness, I know who holds my tomorrow. And I know <laughs> who holds my hand. <laughs> the older saints say he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me 
that I am his own and the joy that we share as we tarry there. None other. That's why we sing the song, you can't tell it like I can. You see my story. You, you see my glory. You don't know my story. I, I was in, I was in a fiery furnace, but guess what? I don't smell like smoke. Yeah, yeah. That lion was supposed to eat me, but guess what? I was not the lion's filet mignon that night. And guess what? Those that had plotted against me that went to take me down and put me into the fiery furnace, if you read the text about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they got burned up before they even went to got close. God will keep you. God will sustain you if you just be still and know. Come on, God is, God is my own. Come on. And oh, you got to remind yourself in those quiet moments with him of what he is. Come on, choir, remind us tonight. Won't you just spend a moment with him? Don't worry about what you got to do when you leave here. Be still and just know. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. Come on, remind yourself of his promise. Come on, this is what you got to do. You got to fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. He'll keep your life clean every day. You know why? Because I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never turn. In my stillness, I know God is. I'm reminded that God is. I'm reminded that God is. I'm reminded that God is. Come on, you can't take half of them. You got to take all of them. Take it all. Take it all. Come on. God is. My all and all. There may be somebody here tonight. You've had some challenging weeks. You've had some challenging months. You've had some things that you've been keeping to yourself that nobody else knows about. There may be something that you're still dealing with from your childhood. And God is saying, be still. You don't deal with it. Let me deal with it. Stay in your lane. Let me handle this situation, this, this circumstance. It could be high blood pressure. It could be diabetes. It could be arthritis. It could be a financial strain. It could be a child that you've been worried about. You've trained them up in the way they should go, but they've gone astray. But guess what the Bible said? It won't depart from them. They'll come on back one day. Somebody here knows tonight how to toss and turn. You got a nice mattress at home, but you don't get a good night's sleep. When the phone rings, you worry about who's going to be on the, other, on the other side. God is saying, let me remind you of who I am. I'm a way maker. I'm a friend to the friendless. I'm money in the bank. I'm clothes on your back. I'm food on your table. He said, I'm a, I'm a doctor. I've never lost the case. That's who he is. Just be still. Don't try to figure it out because when you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. He's your all and your all. God, we thank you tonight. And we praise your name for the ability to be still. God, we come putting in your hands those who have been worrying, those who have been fearful over different issues that's going on in their lives. We come tonight praying salvation in some homes. There's somebody here tonight whose child, whose cousins, whose nieces or nephews, whose husband or wife needs to be saved. God, we pray that you will save them by your power divine. God, we come tonight knowing that somebody left a problem at home 
Somebody left trouble at home. God, I pray that when they get back home that things will be better than when they left them. I pray, I pray, God, tonight that you will bring peace into homes, that you will bring hope into homes, God, that, that, you, will, that you will lift up the heavy burdens of those who are carrying around burdens that nobody else knows about. God, it is revival season, and we've come together tonight to be revived. We've come to be lifted. We've come, oh God, asking you to, to lay aside every weight that so easily besets us, God, so that we can run this race with strides of victory. We thank you, God, for already making a way. We thank you for already opening a door. We're not going to wait until you move your hand, God, but we praise you in advance, knowing that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous, it avails much. So, God, those areas that, that we don't know what to pray for, God, your, your word tells us that the Holy Spirit will intervene on our behalf. And we pray, God, for each individual person in this place that you will encourage them, that you will strengthen them, that you will guide them and lead them and give them the ability to be able to just be still and let you work on their behalf. God, we thank you now. We praise your name and we honor you for already making a way, for already opening a door, and for already keeping us by your power divine. For us in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. And the people of God said amen. Amen. Everybody standing all over the building. Everybody standing all over the building. Amen. We're going out on that word. Be still and know that I am God. Can I tell y'all, I, I thank, I thank uh, Pastor, thank Moderator uh, McCoy for coming tonight and sharing that word with us. Because sometimes in the hustle and bustle of our day, we need to be reminded that we just need to be still and know that God is who God said that God is. And that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or even think according to the power that's at work inside of us. And so we need to leave on that note. We need to leave knowing that we can be still. Can I be honest with y'all? Sometimes, sometimes we spend too much time in church running around, talking and having one meeting after another and not enough time being still so that God can really speak to our hearts. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for sharing that tonight. We needed that. Be still and know that I am God. As we prepare to leave from this place, but never God's presence, it's offering time. Now, let me tell you what we're doing for offering. There are ways to give on the screen, electronic ways that you can give. If you're here today and you desire to give a tangible gift, we'll have trustees at the doors that you can give a gift on your way out of the door. Amen. Amen. Um, I just believe that we need to leave on this note. Amen. This note. This note. Um, let us look to the Lord. Our Father and our God, we say thank you. Thank you for this preacher that you sent this way to remind us to be still. God, sometimes we just move too fast and we go too far. And you require us to be still. Sometimes, Lord, we miss out on the blessing that you have for us because we refuse to be still. Sometimes, God, we get involved with stuff that we don't need to be involved in because we haven't taken time to be still. Sometimes, Lord, we get confused on the journey because if we would just be still and receive our instruction from you, so thank you, Lord, that you reminded us tonight. Be still and know. Know that God is who God said that God would be. Bread when we're hungry. Water in a starving land. Shelter, God, even in the midst of a storm. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. God, we pray that you restore unto him everything that he has poured out unto us. Bless his going out and his coming in. Bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. 
every place that his feet touch. God, we pray that you'll bless it now in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, as we prepare to leave this place, but never from your presence, we pray that you go with us now. Keep us, God, we pray. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, amen, and thank God. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Miller and Pastor McLeod that joined us tonight in our worship.